Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Ruby Tutorial 18 Part 3. Um, we are continuing to look into building a event system that allows you to build events that are larger than uh, a 1x1 one one tile, making them a 2x2, two 3x3, two, three three, etc. tile-based uh, event units. So you can do this to in order to event uh, large uh, sprite clipping um, and, and a variety of other things where you are assuming that it's a large unit or you know so on so that's the general idea of all of this and uh, hopefully we'll go ahead and continue getting into it so um, anyways uh, what we were looking at was the fact that our position here was not returning that it was uh, hitting any events so one thing I want to check here um, is to say is the check position the same as the position in which I'm actually at um, because uh, I'm not sure, I'm wondering if this comparison here um, is not working since these are two different, completely different memory locations then maybe they're not comparing properly um, or, or the same anyway. So I just want to make sure that the values are coming across as the same. So here we're saying 6.5 and 6.6 so obviously that's not going to compare. 7.5, 7, 6.6, 6, nope, 6.6, 6, 6, 6, 6. So that one there should be returning an event and then here we didn't six six seven six seven six six wow we're just bouncing all over the place it's kind of going to be hard to actually determine this we got a whole bunch of pops here okay well he moved over one and he is still checking for that just hold that and he still moved right into the character so let's just go ahead and close this let's try this so instead of actually just doing the position comparison that way since obviously it still wasn't returning that someone was in the position let's try putting the position dot x equals to the x that we're checking and then and the pause.y is equal to the y that we're checking rather than using this check position. And let's see if that does any better. All right, so what we've got, our event. Okay, so here it returned an event. So that means we're getting further than we were before. And he can't move because he's trying to move over himself is my bet. So let's go ahead and we'll close this and then we'll go back down here to the collide with character and then we'll just go ahead and put next if event equals self. Okay, because if the event is itself then there's no reason to check it. We'll just skip it and continue. Alright, so he moved and he's not moving again. If I move down, he's still not moving. We go up, we go up one more, he moves. Okay, so we are appropriately running into collisions. I also cannot move over there. I can't move down. I can't move uh, through here. So as you can tell, we are getting our full-on collision. So the last part is to take our character and move them where they need to be. So let's go ahead and just adjust the sprite, and that will handle the rest of it. <coughs> so let's see. I exposed the character size, didn't I? I did. Okay, that's good. Um, so this is what I was thinking, is, is that we need the sprite to be able to read where the character is at. So the update method has the update x, y, and z locations built into it, so it's right in the middle. So we're not going to touch that. What we're going to do is we're just going to do a check right after the normal update and say, okay, we'll also do this. Okay, So it's sprite character less than sprite base. So let's come on down here all the way to the bottom, and we're going to say class sprite character less than sprite base and then we're gonna go ahead and alias the update method sprite character update large events 
update on last dollar sign at and then we're going to copy that paste that oops, right there and then we're going to go ahead and say update large placement if well, we'll just go ahead and say update large placement okay and so that's a new method we have to now define it and underneath it we are going to go ahead and say uh, if character is not equal to nil so in other words I'm actually rendering a sprite um, if you actually go and look at the sprite character stuff that is actually referenced class sprite character and here we've got character it comes in and then it's stored as character so as long as that's not equal to nil then we know that it's actually rendering something so if the character is not equal to nil <coughs> then we're going to check the size um, we can just go ahead and type is large so oops all right so we go ahead and say if the character is large then we're going to get the size so rather than just getting the size let's create what I'm just going to call it offset and we're going to say, set that equal to 16 pixels multiplied by the character size minus 1 um, character dot care size minus 1 so if their size 1 they're going to be 0 in which case they're not going to be offset. Um, if they are, um, <coughs> excuse me, if they are a character of size 2, then this will equal 1, in which case they will be offset by 16 pixels and so on. So we'll go ahead and put that in parentheses, and then we'll just go ahead and say self.x plus equals 16 and self.y plus equals 16. So we're just going to go ahead and offset the x and y of the uh, sprite by 16 pixels, uh, both x and y, uh, to push them over and down. <coughs> and that should handle it. Um, if you wanted them to actually go to the very bottom of their new location, you could do 32 on or. Um, what you would do is you'd actually create an offset x and an offset y. So you do that, and then offset y equals, and then here you just say 32 times by, same deal. And then here you would just use offset x, and here you'd use offset y. Actually, you know, I didn't mean that for to be 16 right there. I actually meant that to be offset uh, previously. So. Um, OK, let's go ahead and try it out. So right now they're going to push down to the bottom of their new square so instead of appearing here he's gonna appear right here right on the center line so it'll be halfway on this one halfway on this one none up here because he's only 32 tall but if he was a taller picture then he would actually stand more just right in the very center of that whole thing where if he was only pushed 16 pixels over he would be right in the very center of all four um, in which case his picture would start there and so he might not spread all the way down so personally I like using the 32 on the Y offset and 16 on the X just to place them center on X Y I'm sorry on X and then push them all the way to the bottom of their uh, thing on Y so um, let's just go ahead and save that and then let's go ahead and take a look and see how it looks and now we're getting an error message character size for nil class and that's because I cannot spell character. Okay, let's try that one more time. All right, as you can see, our uh, sprite here has now pushed down and to the center. He's not, as you can tell from the offset from Ralph, he's definitely not right at the very... Um, He's not in the same line. He's he's slightly to the side, um, and then that's pretty much it. Um, as you can tell, we're triggering all of that. Um, although there are still a couple of things that we haven't really touched. Um, that is to say, um, is the character going to if he if the player is large, um, which you would. 
there's no real method for having you set the player size right now so let me actually just modify this so you can set the character size we'll just make this an accessor and then what you can do is you can call a uh, call script command which would be game player dot care size equals two and then that would set your character size to two for the player so let's just go ahead and copy that out here we're just going to go ahead and set up a additional event here and have him be that guy and then we're going to have him go ahead and run a script which is going to make him larger but you know what let's actually put that in a uh, conditional branch here well let's see show choices large or small and neither Oops. and choice three will be the cancel option so if large and make him large that then make him small and if neither then just cancel okay so that should handle that and let's just go ahead and check it now 2i for array let's see so if the result is not equal to nil or result equal to false now what would what's the result coming back as that'll help us determine so it comes back as two for the one event and it comes back as an array for the other one so um, what we can do is we can just ask it if it's a string so it's returning the whole array um, and that's probably fault of my um, regular expression up here but um, let's just go ahead and say let's see we could actually modify that down here and we could say if text regular expressions not equal to nil and text result equals uh, you know what we'll do result and paste that oops that off my clipboard. Oh, it wasn't really anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that up here. And then we'll go ahead. Nah, let's just scratch that. And we'll just say text not equal to dollar sign one. Now yeah, there's gotta be a method for that. I'm not sure exactly. I'll have to have to play with it but what we'll do is we'll actually just come up here and say if result is not equal to nil and result dot is a string so we'll just do a typecast on it to check it and say are you a string then we'll go ahead and proceed otherwise we're not okay so now it looks like we're working until he can't move over but let's go ahead and talk to him and say make me large and as you can tell we automatically offset our type checking um, is still not checking for the player he's checking right here because he's actually right here so he's checking right here for an event but because there's not one there then um, it's not triggering anything so we if you wanted to modify the front X front Y to actually return an array there's still a number of things you could play with to actually finish this system but for general events it I mean it, it works pretty well I, I wouldn't really I don't see much point in making your player larger so I mean yeah whatever anyway so we'll just go ahead and make them small again so you can kind of see but I would have just been checking right here directly ahead of me so that's kind of what the deal was there so make them large again and as you can tell I can't now uh, go over can't go up can't go up here even though I am one to his left and then here I can't and here you can tell I'm overlapping onto the side there and here I'm still checking this walkable position and yeah so 
there you have it. I think that's going to handle it for tonight. So I'm going to uh, call it quits. Uh, I guess I forgot some dispose methods in there. Um, anyways, um, for another time, I guess, for that particular part, if I end up getting back to fix it. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to create larger events. Um, again, if you use these scripts, please do credit myself. Um, and then, yeah, otherwise, hope you uh, learned something new and have fun, guys. We'll see you later.